Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hi, Hello. good evening, teacher. Good evening. How are you? Great. Hello, teacher. Good. Good, evening. good evening. It's Monday. <laughs> okay. It's a difficult day. Everybody, welcome. Sean todos bienvenidos. I'm going to share the screen with you now. Here we go. There's only one problem here. <laughs> I've made a small mistake. This is not, yeah, session 13. Yeah, correct. Okay, let's get started. But first things first, I need to call the attendance list. So when you hear your name, please say present or indicate that you are here. Let's begin. Andrea Ixchel Sanchez Aguilar. Andrea Ixchel Sanchez Aguilar. Blanca Mireya Galdames Hernández. Blanca Mireya Galdames Hernández. No. Braulio Heriberto Velázquez Mejía. Present teacher. Thank you. Carlos René Ramírez Varillas. Celia Verónica Pleites López. Celia Verónica Pleites López. Claudia Yesenia Évora de Hernández. Present teacher. Thank you. Doribel Arelí Areaza Flores. Doribel Arelí Arriaza Flores. Elena Gabriela Jovel Valle. Present teacher. Thank you. Emanuel Portales Hernández. Emanuel Portales Hernández. Fátima Noemí Rivera Rivas. Fátima Noemí Rivera. Irma Suleima Grande de Cuellar. Irma Suleima Grande de Cuellar. Jacqueline Elizabeth Guevara Centeno. Jacqueline Elizabeth Guevara Centeno. Jacqueline Rebeca Cermeño López. Jacqueline Rebeca Cermeño López. Jaime Ernesto Palacio Cepeda. Present teacher. Thank you. Jennifer Marisol Iraeta de Torres. Jennifer Marisol Iraeta de Torres. Present teacher. Thank you. Jonathan Eduardo Elías Granadeño. Jonathan Eduardo Elías Granadeño. José Alexi Ávila Alfaro. José Alexi Ávila Alfaro. José Aristides Moreno Alberto. Present teacher. Thank you. José Manuel García García. Present teacher. Thank you. Jocelyn Noemí Romero Alvarado. Jocelyn Noemí Romero Alvarado. Carla Abigail Aguilar Rodríguez. Carla Abigail Aguilar Rodríguez. Ligia Lisbeth Arias Abarca. Ligia Lisbeth Arias Abarca. Teacher, yo soy Jonathan Eduardo, pero no podía entrar. Jonathan Eduardo, vamos, la vamos a poner acá ya. Ya está, muchas gracias. Teacher, Andrea, acabo de entrar. Andrea Ixchel. Ok. Yes. Thank you. Marcela Alejandra Lousel Bonilla. Marcela. Ok, thank you. Mirna Yanet Landos de Luna. Present teacher. Thank you. Ricardo Alexander Flores Osorio. Ricardo Alexander Flores Osorio. Saúl Alexander Lozano Calderón. Present teacher. Thank you. 
Wendy Lisette Carías de Cedillos. Present teacher. Thank you. Yolanda Arely Flores de Humansor. Present teacher. Thank you. Zulma Maritza Landaverde de Pineda. Zulma Maritza Landaverde de Pineda. Alguien que no haya escuchado su nombre y se haya conectado eh, recientemente, ¿me puede indicar, por favor? Eh, yo, Doribel, quiero ver, sí. aquí está. Doribel, thank you. Gracias, muchas gracias. ¿Alguien más sí. que no haya escuchado su nombre? ¿Estamos todos? Sí, ahí están todos. Ok, let's begin. Here's what we're going to do. Everybody, take a look. Welcome, this is uh, Inglés Principiante Módulo 3, and that's me, Ivan Doñan, at your service. This is session 13, and today is December the 5th, 2022. Faltó una letra ahí. No, no te. Okay, hoy sí. December the 5th, 2022. Everybody, be welcome. Let's begin. ¿Qué vamos a hacer hoy? Veamos, es la última unidad. Así que esta semana terminamos las clases. Let's begin. You have the snapshot right here. Listen and practice. Where were these people born? ¿Dónde nacieron estas personas? What are we going to do? Match the people with the countries. Then check your answers at the bottom of the snapshot. What famous people were born in your country and what do they do? I want you to listen to the names of the people and I want you to listen to the names of the countries. And after that, you tell me who was born where. Let's do this. One, Issey Miyake, designer. Could you hear that? Yes, teacher, designer. Okay. Thank yes, you, teacher. thank you, thank you. Let's continue. Two, Shakira, singer. Three, Chow Yun Fat, actor. Four, Salma Hayek. Actress. Five, Ronaldo, athlete. A, Brazil. B, China. C, Colombia. D, Japan. E, Mexico. Okay, now you tell me. Issei Miyake, designer. Where is he from? Where is Issei Miyake from? Braulio. Uh, he's from Japan. Japan. So letter D. That Japan. is correct. Sorry. Very good. Yeah, that's right. We'll continue with Wendy Lisset, then Mirna Yanet, and then Jose Aristides, and then Andrea Ixchel, and then Claudia Evora. Ok, Claudia Ebra me mandó aquí un mensaje. Ya lo leímos. Gracias por avisarme. Ok, me mantienen la manita levantada por lo menos antes de, que, de su participación. Ya cuando terminen de participar, ya la pueden bajar. Así no me pierdo yo en el orden. Ok, Wendy, what about Shakira, the singer? Where is she from? Where is she from? Colombia. Ok, you say she is from Colombia. Ok. That is correct. She's from Colombia. Very good. Thank you. Mirna Yanet. What about Chong Yung Fat, the actor? Where is he from? He is Japan. He is from Japan. From Japan. But it's not possible because Issei Miyake is from Japan. Ah, uh, sorry. China. Okay, so complete sentence, please. He is? He is from China. He is from China. Yeah, that's right. He's from China. Very good. Thank you. Jose Aristides. What about number four? Salma Hayek. Where is she from? She's from Mexico. She's from Mexico. Yeah, that's correct. She's from Mexico. Very good. Thank you, Jose Aristides. Andrea Ixchel. What about Ronaldo, the athlete? Where is he from? He is from Brazil. He's from Brazil. Yeah, that's right. You have that. He's from Brazil. Very good. Okay. 
So what about this question right here? What famous people were born in your country? What famous people were born in El Salvador? Megan Canadia. Uh -huh. What famous people were born in El Salvador? El Mágico. Mágico González, yeah, Jorge. Okay, Jorge El Mágico González. Yes, he's a Salvadoran uh, athlete. He's a Salvadoran soccer player. Very good. Uh, Braulio? Yeah. Uh, Álvaro Torres. Álvaro Torres, okay, yeah, he's a singer from El Salvador. Very good. Okay, yeah. Who else? So let's just teach her, man. Okay, a bit difficult. The question is a bit difficult, I know. Okay, then, moving on. That's the first part. That's the snapshot. Conversation. I was born in South Korea. I want you to listen to the conversation. And after that, um, I will need two volunteers to read it. But let's listen to it first. Where were you born, Melissa? I was born in Korea. Oh, so you weren't born in the U.S.? No, I came here in 1999. Hmm, you were pretty young. Yes, I was only 17. Did you go to college right away? No, my English wasn't very good, so I took English classes for two years first. Well, your English is really good now. Thanks, your English is pretty good too. Yeah. But I was born here. Okay. Um, I need two volunteers, one boy and one girl, to read this, please. One boy, one girl. Okay, Wendy, you read Melissa's part. Now, one boy to read Chuck's part, please. Braulio, okay, good. Braulio, please read Chuck's part. And Wendy, please read Melissa's part. Oh, Con emoción, verdad? <laughs> Mm -hmm. Braulio, you begin. Me escucha, teacher. Sí, le escucho. Eh, lo miro bien cómodo ahí, se va a dormir usted. Ah, ok. <risa> no, es que, es que, <risa> es que mi familia está ahí amor, eh, cenando todavía. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Ah, oh, no problem, <risa> no problem. Estoy bromeando. Ok, let's begin. Ok. <risa> Comienzo, ¿verdad? Yes, okay. please. Where were you born, Melissa? I was born in South Korea. Oh, so you weren't born in the USA? US. No, US. I, I come. No, I come here in 90. 99. 1999. The pronunciation. 1999. 1999. 1999. 1999. Also, I came here in 1999. I came here in 1999. Okay. Mm, you were pretty young. You were pretty young. Mm -hmm. Yes, I was only 17. Did you go to college right away? No, my English wasn't very good. So I took English classes for two years first. Well, your English is really good now. Thanks. Your English is pretty good too. Yeah, but I was born here. And I was born here. Yeah, thank you. Okay, um, Chuck says, "Were you? where were you born, Melissa? And Melissa says, I was born in South Korea. Chuck says, oh, so you weren't born in the US. Melissa says, no, I came here in 1999. Chuck says, hmm, you were pretty young. Melissa says, yes, I was only 17. Chuck says, did you go to college right away? Melissa says, no, my English wasn't very good. So I took English classes for two years first. Chuck says, well, 
your English is really good now. Melissa says, thanks. Your English is pretty good too. And Chuck says, yeah, but I was born here, okay, in the United States. So um, before we continue, do you have any questions about vocabulary or expressions in this conversation? No me digan que no tienen preguntas. Estoy más que seguro que tienen preguntas. Uh -huh. What are your questions? No questions. Incredible. I don't believe it. Claudio. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, Creo que primero la compañerita. Ok, 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 good. Pero siempre levantemos la manita para que, para que no haya choque así de pronto. Ok, Andrea. Sí, yo tengo la duda, pero más que todo en cómo es que se ocupa el pretty. Ok, Ahí. pretty es un intensifier, o sea que es como bastante. No es un adjetivo, normalmente pretty como adjetivo es como lindo, linda, bonito, bonita. Eso es pretty. Pero si usted utiliza pretty, la palabra pretty, antes de un adjetivo, entonces ya no, se vuelve, ya no es un adjetivo, se convierte en un adverbio pretty. Y pretty significa bastante o oh, considerablemente, ¿verdad? Cuando le dice, you were pretty young, dice, estaba bastante joven. Uh -huh. Lo mismo pasa cuando dice Melissa al final, thanks, your English is pretty good too. Si tu inglés también es bastante bueno, le dice, pero le dice Chuck, sí, pero yo nací aquí, ¿vale? <ríe> tendría que ser así. So, that's, that's how you use it. Ok, uh, Braulio, what's your question? Sí, teacher, una pregunta. Eh, yo de un solo mencioné, eh, eh, where, 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 where. Uh -huh. Pero, ¿cómo es la pronunciación correcta? Porque, o sea, yo veo como que se parecen a dos palabras un poco. Es, es virtualmente idéntica. Dice, so, where were you born? Hay algunos que ah, afirman que al, al hacer okay. la pregunta, la question word, habría que ponerle un como, un poquito como where, where, pero en la práctica eso no sucede. Es prácticamente igual. Where were you born? Ah, uh -huh. ok. Ajá, sí, porque, porque, como le repito, para mí como que se, como que fuese igual en cuanto a la uh -huh. pronunciación, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Y quería saber si no estaba erróneo ahí. No, así se va. Where were you born? Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. we're, we're, okay, thanks, teacher. You're welcome. Any other questions? Teacher, ¿y cuando hablamos de la película de Mujer Bonita? It's Pretty Woman. Ajá. 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 Ahí, ahí sí, pretty es un adjetivo. Ahí significa bonita, pretty woman. Y como la canción también, pretty woman. Mm -hmm. Ahí sí. En ese ah, caso okay. sí funciona así. Si, si la palabra pretty aparece antes de un sustantivo, como en el caso de woman, entonces sí, es bonito, bonita. Si aparece antes de un adjetivo, entonces se convierte en un adverbio y significa bastante. Uh -huh. Como en el caso de pretty young or pretty good. Saúl. Teacher, ¿y usted qué nos puede decir acerca de la palabra del adverbio thanks? Eh, ¿Por qué dice uno thanks? En vez de thank you. Ah, ok. Pero no es un adverbio. Um, thanks es lo mismo que thank you. Si usted le dice a alguien thanks, es el equivalente a decirle thank you. Es igual. Uh -huh. Lo que no se puede decir es thanks you. O sea, poner thanks y luego agregar you. Uh -huh. oh. uh -huh. Pero da igual. Si usted le dice a alguien thanks, está bien. Si le dice thank you, también está bien. No hay ningún problema. Es una alternativa nada más. Uh -huh. Ok. Gracias. Ok. Elena Gabriela. Eh, una consulta. ¿Por qué en la pregunta, yo pregunta con did y Melissa no responde con did? No es absolutamente necesario. La cuestión es que Melissa no está dando una short answer, está dando una long answer, o sea, una respuesta larga. Si okay. ella quisiera dar una short answer, podría simplemente decir no, y ya tú, o podría decir no, I didn't. Y luego comienza una nueva oración mm -hmm. dando la información adicional, que sería 
uh, my English wasn't very good, so I took English classes for two years first. Pero en este caso, Melissa opta por dar una respuesta larga. Cuando da la respuesta larga, no es necesario ocupar el auxiliar. Solamente dice, no, my English wasn't very good, so I took English classes for two years first. Mm -hmm. Okay. Por eso okay. sería. Bueno. Any other questions? Braulio. Teacher, una preguntita. Mm -hmm. Con respecto a lo que la, acá, le acaba de preguntar la compañera, ¿verdad? Uh -huh, que uh -huh. ¿Por qué no respondía con 10? Y nosotros podemos decirle así, no sé si es correcto, ¿va? Eh, en las conversaciones, cuando uno las practica, nos puede dar o nos puede indicar lo de la coma, a que uh -huh. la respuesta es corta. Porque, va, yo, ahí ella le dice no, ¿va? Uh -huh. Y pone una coma y ella empieza a como a decir, como a explicar o como a comentar algo, pero en cuanto al did you go, entiendo que solo le dice no, ¿verdad? La coma o sea, habría que utilizarla independientemente si la respuesta es corta o larga. Es decir, yo ah, puedo decir en este caso, okay. yes, I did, o oh, doy una respuesta larga, yes, I went to college right away. Ok, independientemente que sea corta o larga la respuesta, después del yes o del no, habría que utilizar una coma y al momento de hablar, hacer una pausa, ¿verdad? No, I didn't, or you say no, como le dijo ella, my English wasn't very good, ¿verdad? Etcétera, etcétera, ok. Ah, ok, uh -huh. gracias teacher, es que como una vez se tiende a asociar para alguna... En mi mente, ¿va? yo digo, quizás porque después de la coma ya empieza a hablar de otra, uh -huh. o explicar otra, otra cosa. Pero gracias, Julio. Ok, ok. Por acá, ya que Elizabeth nos indica que acaba de conectarse, ya le tomamos su asistencia. Um, sorry. Piché. Piché. ¿Quién? José Aristi. Ah, ok. okay. Sí, eh, ¿Cómo, este, en qué momento poner yes y en qué momento poner yeah? Porque miro que hay... Ah, yeah, es una forma alternativa de yes, pero es, no es, es, es menos formal, eso es lo que hay que saber, ¿verdad? O sea, usted puede decir yeah, pero si quiere sonar más formal, lo mejor es decir yes. Ya yeah, es un poquito más coloquial. Así que, por ejemplo, si usted algún día va a una entrevista de trabajo, lo mejor es decir yes y no yeah, porque se escucha muy coloquial, entonces... Cositas así le pueden costar su oportunidad laboral, ¿verdad? Thanks. You're welcome. Ok. Y hablando de esto. Right away. What's the meaning of right away? Me dijeron que no tenían preguntas. Así que, ¿qué significa? O yo les pregunto a ustedes. What is right away? Mm -hmm. <laughs> ok. You said you didn't have questions. Right away. Means immediately, inmediatamente. That's the meaning of right away. Entonces, ¿qué pasa cuando pregunta acá él? Quiero ver. Did you go to college right away? O sea, ¿fuiste a la universidad inmediatamente cuando vino y tenía 17 años? ¿Y qué le dice Melissa? No, my English wasn't very good, so I took English classes for two years first. After that, she went to college. Ok, ahí tenemos el significado de right away. Right away means immediately, de inmediato. Ok. Let's take a look at this. Lesson objective. This is the first objective for this unit. By the end of this class, you will be able to form positive and negative statements with the past of the verb be. Additionally, you will practice a conversation which illustrates how this topic is used in a real life setting. Al final de esta clase, ustedes serán capaces de formar oraciones positivas y negativas en pasado de, del verso cero. Bueno, le di copiar y pegar, esto estaba mal. Bueno, además practicará una conversación la cual ilustra cómo se utiliza este tema en un escenario de la vida real. Give me a moment, I need to change this. Con el verso, verso no, tendría que ser verbo. 
No con son, sino con el verbo ser. I'm sorry. I apologize for this. Pero vamos. Grammar focus. Statements with the past of the verb be. This is what you have in the manual. This is what you have in the video. Also explained by Mr. Sands. Statements with the past of be. You say, I was born in South Korea. Siempre que usted va a hablar de donde usted nació o cuando usted nació, va a utilizar esto. Es el verb, el verb be en pasado y luego ocupa born. Esta es una estructura más compleja que se conoce como passive voice, pero no lo van a estudiar todavía, ¿verdad? Eso sí, yo ya les recomiendo lo que les dije la vez la semana pasada. ¿Se acuerdan de la lista de irregular verbs que les di? Aparece la forma en pasado y aparece el past participle para ocupar. El passive voice, efectivamente, van a tener que saber los verbos irregulares en past participle. Así que reitero mi recomendación. Váyaselos aprendiendo. Váyaselos aprendiendo y se acordará de mí luego y dirá, tenía razón el teacher. Se lo agradezco. No me va a ver a la cara para decírmelo, pero va, se va a acordar. Estoy seguro que se va a acordar. Ok. Y si no lo hace, después va a decir, ah, tenía razón el teacher, me los tengo que aprender todos. Saúl. Lo siento, teacher. Uh -huh. Fíjese de que a mí no me, a mí no me, no me aparece esa. No le aparece. Pedir. Ah, de verdad. Aparece. Mm. Bueno, ¿qué tal si me comparte su, su correo por medio del chat y yo al final de la clase se lo mando por correo? No sé sí, si le parece. Lo quisiera, teacher. Ok, sí. Ese lo mandé por medio del, del, del grupo de WhatsApp. Pero si alguien no tiene acceso a él por algún motivo, pónganme en el chat, por favor, su correo. Y yo al final de la clase se lo voy a mandar por correo. Va, está bien. Uh -huh. Teacher, ¿o ¿por qué no lo vuelve a compartir nuevamente? Podemos hacer eso Ahí también. Nada más que no lo tengo el archivo listo ahorita. Tendría que ser al final. Pero sí, puedo hacerlo Gracias. nuevamente. Gracias, teacher. Okay, Perfect. so uh, the second one, you were pretty young. You were, that's the past of the verb be. Es el pasado del verb be. You were pretty young. Eras bastante joven, right? She was 17. She was 17. Algo que tenemos que recordar es que cuando usted expresa su edad, no va a ocupar como en español el verbo tener, o sea, no va a utilizar have. Lo que va a utilizar es el verb be, como cuando usted dice, en mi caso, yo tengo 37 años. Entonces yo digo, I am 37 years old. ¿Verdad? Yo nunca digo, I have 37 years old. Eso sería equivocado. Entonces, de la misma manera, para expresar la edad que usted tenía en alguna época en particular, en algún año en particular, tendría que ocupar también el verb be, solo que en pasado, como en este caso. She was 17. I'm going to zoom in. She was 17. Ok. Luego tenemos, we were born in the same year. Nacimos el mismo año. And they were in South Korea in 1998. Now take a look. There are negative statements. I wasn't born in the US. You weren't very old. She wasn't in college. We weren't born in the same country. They weren't in the US in 1998. Now, There are some contractions. Wasn't is the short form of was not. Weren't is the short form of were not. Something to remember. Como ya sabemos que la información que aparece en el manual es un poquito, es muy cortita, ¿verdad? Vamos a expandirlo, como es costumbre. So, was and where. Take a look. This is not in the manual. This is not in the platform. So everybody pay close attention. Remember the video will be available for you to watch later. Take a look. This is Robert. Last night. You see last night? And now. So Robert is at work now. At midnight last night, la medianoche, de anoche, right? He wasn't at work. He was in bed. He was asleep. Estaba en su cama. Estaba dormido. Acordémonos que el verb be tiene prácticamente dos significados en español. Uno es ser y el otro es estar. En español tenemos dos verbos separados para esto, pero en inglés es solo uno. Es el verb be. El verb be incluye ser y estar. Ambos. Así que veamos. Am and is 
are the forms in the present. Was is the form in the past. Take a look, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. I am tired now. I was tired last night, okay? Where is Kate now? Where was Kate yesterday? The weather is nice today. The weather was nice last week. So remember, this is the verb being present, am and is. In the past, you use was. So you use I was, sorry, I was, he was, she was, it was. Okay? Now, are is the present for the subjects we, you, and they. The past is where. Bless you, <laughs> Saul. Bless you. <laughs> Creo que no me escuchó. Bless you, Saul. <laughs> okay. The next one. You are late now. You were late yesterday. They aren't here now. They weren't here last Sunday. So remember, are is the present form, where is the past form. And you use are and where with the subjects, you, we, and they. Okay. Frases útiles. Bless you. Salud. Cuando alguien estornuda, usted le puede decir eso. Bless you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Seguimos por acá. Todo el mundo tiene desactivada la cámara. Bueno, no, no todo el mundo, solo algunos. Okay, now take a look. Was and where. This is the form. There is the affirmative form and the negative form. Affirmative. This is what I was saying. With the subjects I, he, she, and it, you use was, okay? You say, I was, yo era, o yo estaba. También puede ser, yo fui, o yo estuve. Es el ver, verbo ser o estar en pasado. He was, she was, it was. For the subjects, we, you, and they, you use were. We were, you were, they were. That's the affirmative form. The negative form is very easy. You just need to add the particle not and you make it negative. Look, for the subjects I, he, she, and it, you say was not or the short form wasn't. Okay, por acá nos avisan algunos problemas con la cámara. Okay, enterado. And then for the subjects, we, you, and they, you say were not, or the short form weren't. Okay? That's it. Entonces el negativo es fácil, solo le pone not y ya estuvo. Y lo más común es utilizarlo en su forma corta, wasn't or weren't. Okay. Let's see. I have some examples. Necesito que me ayuden a leerlos. Para no hablar solo yo. I need a volunteer. Who wants to read this? Primer ejemplo. ¿Quién me ayuda a leerlo? José Manuel, then Wendy Lisette. Okay. Then Braulio Liberto. I have four examples. So, José Manuel, the first one, please. Last year, Rachel was 22. So, she is 23 now. Yes, thank you. Last year, Rachel was 22, so she is 23 now. I can say last year I was 36, so I'm 37 now. Thank you, Jose Manuel. Wendy Lisette, the second one, please. When I was a child, I was scared of dogs. Thank you. When I was a child, I was scared of dogs. Cuando yo era niño, Eh, le tenía miedo a los perros sería la traducción más parecida al español pero ese estaba asustada ese de los perros si sí, uno lo traduce bien literalmente pero en español nadie habla así así que le temía a los perros eso es algo que usted uh, podemos emplear por, por cierto tenerle miedo a algo es be scared of 
Ok, usted puede decir, por ejemplo, I am, para que sea más fácil de comprender, I am scared of spiders. Por ejemplo, me asustan las arañas, tengo miedo a las arañas. Si usted quiere ocuparlo en pasado, dice, antes me daban miedo, pero ahora ya no. I was, ¿verdad? Y aquí lo vamos viendo. Scared of spiders. Ok. I was scared of spiders. Ok. Thank you, Wendy. Ah, Wendy, I have a question for you. What were you scared of when you were a kid? ¿A qué le tenía miedo usted cuando era niña? I was scared of cucarachas. <laughs> Those are cockroaches. Cucarachas. Cockroaches. So you can say, I was scared of cockroaches. Mm -hmm. Okay. Braulio, the next yeah. example. Please. Okay, teacher. Number three. We were hungry after. We were hungry of the trip. We were very tired. We were hungry after the trip, but we weren't tired. Mm -hmm. Estamos hambrientos después del viaje, pero no estamos, ca perdón, cansados. Otra cosa, verdad? En inglés. Bueno, en español, cuando queremos expresar cómo nos sentimos, sobre todo los estados del cuerpo, utilizamos el verbo tener. Usted tiene frío, tiene hambre, tiene sed, tiene sueño, tiene calor, tiene frío, etcétera, etcétera. Pero en inglés se ocupa el verb be, el verbo ser o estar. Entonces, no es, en inglés nadie dice tengo hambre, sino más bien dice estoy hambriento. Así es como se expresa eh, ese sentir, digamos, en inglés. Así que, en pasado también se ocuparía el verb como acá. We were hungry, ¿verdad? Estábamos hambrientos. En español nadie lo dice así, todos decimos, tenía, teníamos hambre. Ok, pero en inglés va así. We were hungry after the trip, but we weren't tired. Ok. Claudia Évora, the last one, please. The hotel was comfortable, but it wasn't expensive. Ok, thank you. Just uh, pronunciation. The hotel was comfortable. That's the pronunciation, comfortable. The hotel was comfortable, but it wasn't expensive. Nice. Okay. That's very good. That's my kind of hotel. So um, remember, for the subjects I, he, she, it, you use was in negative, wasn't. For the subjects we, you, and they, you use were in affirmative form and the negative weren't. Let's continue. Vamos a ver. Exercise. Where were these people at three yesterday afternoon? Okay. Where were these people? Cuidado. Les digo esto porque casi siempre cuando hago este ejercicio con mis alumnos se confunden. No es que estaban haciendo, más bien es dónde estaban. What about Dan at three? Where was he? Raise your hand, remember, raise your hands. Ante la manita. Saúl, then Wendy, then Emmanuel, then Andrea Ixchel. He was sleeping. Ajá, the pero bed. cuidado. Ajá, ajá, vaya. On Ahora sí. He was? On the bed. In bed, okay. Dan was in bed. bed. That's right, correct. Dan, Dan was <clears throat> in bed. Correct. Thank you, Saúl. Wendy Lisette, what about Kate... Jack and Kate. Jack and Kate was in the cinema. Ah, well, take a look. Jack and Kate, two people. Where? Where? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Jack, Jack and, and Kate, Kate were in the cinema. At cinema. Con, con la marca registrada también. Bueno, podemos decir Jack and Kate were at the movies. Más fácil. Okay, Jack and Kate were at the movies. Estaban en el cine. Alternativamente, were at the cinema. Cinema. Thank you, uh, Wendy. Emmanuel, number three. Um, how pronounce her name? Sue. 
Sue was in the train station. Sue was at the train station. Yeah, very good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Alguien me había levantado la mano por ahí, pero ella la bajó. Quizás no querían el siguiente. Andrea Ischel, thank you. What about Mr. and Mrs. Hall? Mr. and Mr. Hall were in a restaurant. Good. Mr. and Mrs. Hall were in a restaurant. That is correct. Very good. Uh, Wendy wants to participate again. What about Ben? Ben was in the beach. Ben was at the beach. Okay, very good. Thank you. Ben was at the beach. And you? Pregunta abierta. Aquí, ¿quién quiere contestar? Where were you at 3, 3 p.m. yesterday afternoon? Where were you at 3 yesterday afternoon? Andrea Ischel. I was in my work. Okay, I was at work. At work. Mm -hmm. I was at work. On Sunday? Okay, I was at work. Le tocó ir domingo. Ni modo. All right. Um, someone else? Where were you at three yesterday afternoon? Saul. Yesterday, I was watching TV in my house. Ok, pero de nuevo la pregunta es dónde estaba, más bien, no qué estaba haciendo, aunque no le voy a negar, lo que me ha dicho es gramaticalmente correcto, ¿verdad? Así que también está bien, ¿verdad? Pero contestando la pregunta, eh, puntualmente sería, I was. I was watching TV. In my house. Mm -hmm. At home. At home. Yeah. You can say, I was at home. Very good. Thank I you. Thank you. Wendy. I was in the park yesterday. I was in the park. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> good. Good. Thank you. Very good. Insisto, a mí me encanta que hay algunos que, que participan bastante y excelente, excelente. Pero hay gente que no le conozco la voz siquiera. Eh, les invito, traten de participar, ¿verdad? Que no sean siempre las mismas cinco personas que están levantando la mano siempre. Me encanta que participen, pero quisiera ver a los demás también. Ok. Doribel. Where were you at three yesterday afternoon? I was on TV. I was? Uh, at the beach. At the beach. Okay, nice. Yeah. Okay, very nice. Like Ben. <laughs> okay, like Ben, he was at the beach too. Okay, very good. Thank you. Next exercise. 9.44, wow. Time flies. Well, we're going to do this exercise. Veamos. Tienen que demostrarme que pueden distinguir entre el presente y el pasado. See? The exercise goes, right, am, is, or are in present, or was, or where in past. Les recomiendo que lean la oración completa antes de decidir si va, si va el verbo en presente o si va en pasado. Ok. Muy importante. So, take a look. Um, number one, who wants to participate? Wendy. Last year she was 22, so she is 23 now. Good. Last year she was 22, so she is 23 now. Very good. Thank you, Wendy. Andrea Ixchel, number two. Today the weather is nice, mm -hmm. but yesterday it was very cold. Yesterday it was very cold. Very good. Thank you, Andrea. Mirna, number three, please. Um, I was hungry. Can, can I have something to eat? Can I have something to eat? Dice. Entonces está pidiendo algo de comer. Mm -hmm. ¿Será que tenía hambre o todavía tiene hambre? Um, Creo que todavía tiene hambre. Ajá, entonces no sería en pasado, sería en presente. Ah, ok. Ajá, ¿nos queda entonces? <risa> sería... Uh, I am. 
Mm -hmm. I am hungry. I am hungry. <clears throat> Can I have something to eat? Can I have some eat? something to eat? Yeah, I am hungry. Can I have something to eat? Thank you, Mirna. Emmanuel, number four. Luego sigue Zulma, luego sigue Blanca, luego sigue Doribel. Okay, Emmanuel, number four. I feel fine this morning, but I was very tired last night. That's correct. I feel fine this morning, but I was very tired last night. Thank you, Emmanuel. Uh, Zulma Maritza, number five, please. My case was here this morning. Where are, where are they now? Okay, take a look. My keys. That's pronunciation, my keys. Also, keys, my keys. that's a plural now. Okay. Es en plural. Así que, so my, my keys. keys. Where? Mm -hmm. My keys were here this morning. Where are they now? Yeah, okay, that is correct. Thank you, Surma. My keys were here this morning. Where are they now? Okay, good. Thank you very much. Blanca Mireya, number six, please. Don't buy those shoes. They are very expensive. Don't buy those shoes. They are very expensive. Okay, thank you very much. The next one is a conversation. Doribel, please, number seven. I like your new jacket. Thank you. Mm, where? It where? Thank you. Where is <laughs> para los... Okay, where, where is para los sujetos you, we, y they? Los demás ocupan was. Por lo tanto, sería... It was. Mm -hmm. it, was. it was on sale. Okay. Oh, oh. Está en oferta, le dice. Okay. I like your new jackets. Yeah, thanks. It was on sale. Está en oferta. Thank you. Okay. Claudia Evora, number eight, please. This time last year, I was in Paris. This time last year, I was in Paris. Correct. Very good. Now I need two volunteers for number nine, please. Two volunteers. Wendy and Zulma. No. Sorry, Saul. <laughs> yeah, Wendy and Zulma. You go for the next one. De ahí hay otro ejercicio. Hay un espacio ahí abajo. Todavía falta. <laughs> okay, Wendy. You begin. Where, where are Sam and Joey? Where are Sam and Joe? I don't know. Oh, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> That's for Zulma. That's for Zulma. Okay. I don't know. They they were here a few minutes ago. ago. Yeah, correct. Thank you, Wendy and Sulma. Correct. Where are Sam and Joe? And the other person says, I don't know. They were here a few minutes ago. Aquí estaban hace unos minutos. So they were here a few minutes ago. Thank you very much. Very good. There's another exercise for you. Yo sé que les encantan los ejercicios, vamos a hacer otro. Veamos, right, was, where, or wasn't wearing. Ahora tienen que identificar entre afirmativo y negativo. Todo está en pasado, no hay nada en presente. Pero ahora tienen que identificar entre afirmativo y negativo. De nuevo, la recomendación es, lean la oración completa para tener el contexto claro, ¿verdad? La idea concreta de lo que van a hacer. So, number one. Who wants to try? Raise your hand. Andrea Ischel. We weren't happy with the hotel. Our room was very small. And it wasn't clean. That is correct. Very good. Thank you, Andrea. We weren't happy with the hotel. Our room was very small. And it wasn't clean. Thank you. Wendy, then Emmanuel. Okay, Wendy, number two, please. Need was it need wasn't at war last week because he was sick. Has he's better now. Correct. 
thank you very much. Nick wasn't at work last week because he was sick. He's better now. Thank you. Emmanuel, number three, please. <clears throat> yeah, yesterday was a holiday, so the banks was closed. They are open today. Mm, the banks? That's a that's a plural noun. Mm, we're closed. We're closed. I see. Yes. They are open today. They are open today. Yesterday was a holiday, so the banks were closed. They're open today. Algo que hay que aclarar acá, verdad? It is for one thing. They is for. Well, this is for objects only. Okay, they is two or more things or people. Okay, mientras que el subject pronoun it es exclusivo para cosas, para cosas nada más cuando son singulares o incontables. Eh, they no es exclusivo para personas, también es para cosas. En este caso, the banks es el equivalente de they. Si solo fuera un banco, the bank, entonces sería it. Pero como son varios, es el equivalente de they. Por lo tanto, the banks were. Así se utiliza. The banks were, they were. OK. Very good. Thank you, Emmanuel. Uh, number four. Well, it's a conversation, so I need two volunteers for number four, please. Who wants to help me? Saul and who else? Quien más? Andrea. Okay. Saul, you begin. Andrea, you finish. We're Kate and, and Bill at the party. That is correct because when you say uh, Kate and Bill, two people, they, yeah. okay, were they at the party? Okay, Andrea. Yeah, no. <laughs> okay, um, who, who can help me with the second part? Hello. Hello, hello, Andrea. Hoy sí, me escucho. <laughs> Hoy sí, le escucho. Es como, como me bajó la manita y no tenía el micrófono activado. Creí sí, que sí, ya, sí. No, ya no quería. <laughs> se, se, echó para, se echó para atrás, dije. Okay, Andrea. Kate was there. But we, but Bill was. Correct. Was. Correct. Okay. Thank you, Saul and Andrea. Were Kate and Bill at the party? Kate was there, but Bill wasn't. Mm -hmm. Kate estaba ahí, pero Bill no. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Sulma, number five, please. Where are my keys? They were on the table by they, by, by they, they are not there now. Thank you. That is correct. Where are my keys? They were on the table, but sorry, they are not there now. Okay. Very good. And Mirna, Janet, the last one, please. Seria, you were at home last night. I'm sorry, can you repeat it? You? You were. You um, were home last night. Last, last night. Uh -huh. Where? 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 Ahí sí me quedé. Seria. Uh, where, 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 you? La segunda está correcta, pero no concuerda con la primera, porque si le dice, si se lo dice en forma afirmativa, you were home last night, dice, estabas en la casa anoche, pero luego le pregunta, where were you? ¿Dónde estabas? Ya no... Si sabe dónde estaba, no le voy a preguntar dónde estaba después. Por lo tanto, la primera sería. 
uh, sería you weren't. Mm -hmm. You weren't home last night. Mm -hmm. Where were you? Where, Where were, were you? you? Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. You weren't home last night. Anoche no estuviste en la casa. ¿Dónde estabas? Where were you? Yeah, escapó. that's right. Se escapó. <laughs> Se escapó. Okay, so you weren't home last night. Where were you? Very good. Okay, that's that's very nice. We're about to finish. So I guess we can do the exercise, which is the knowledge check. Um, this is the knowledge check. En, en la plataforma aparece diferente, ¿verdad? Porque, bueno, es, es distinto el ejercicio como sale ahí. Pero proviene de acá, así que las mismas respuestas son que están ahí. Melissa is talking about her family. Choose the correct verb forms, then compare with a partner. ¿Qué van a hacer acá? Solo hay que elegir lo que está entre paréntesis, uno o el otro. Así de sencillo. Y de nuevo es... Básicamente lo mismo que aparece en el, en el uh, Knowledge Check 5.2 que está en la plataforma, así que si lo resolvemos acá, ahí está la respuesta, prácticamente es igual. Y la recomendación siempre es que lo vaya haciendo, eh, que vayamos justo al día con eso, para que no se nos acumule, especialmente esta semana que es la última y se espera que para el jueves ya esté resuelto todo, incluyendo también el final test, el final exam. Así que no, no le voy a agarrar la tarde. Okay, so the first one, my family and I were. ¿Por qué decimos I were y no I was? ¿Quién me sabría decir? Wendy. Porque está hablando de dos personas, o sea, en plural. Mm -hmm. De más de dos la, personas, de más, diría de dos yo. Personas, ajá, sí. ajá. Porque my family. La familia. Ajá. Ajá. My family and I were. Pero sí, está en plural. En definitiva, esa es la razón. My family and I were all born in South Korea. Así es. No solo porque tenemos I significa que automáticamente vamos a usar was. No, habría que ver el sujeto completo, que es my family and I. O sea, son varias personas, son por lo menos dos más. Y luego estoy yo. So my family and I were all born in South Korea. Pero como dicen que todos nacieron en Corea del Sur, probablemente son más personas, but son más numerosos. Ok, we, what about the first one? Zulma. Uh, we weren't, we weren't born in the USA. In the US, <laughs> le pone una letra más ahí. We weren't born in the US, ok. The United States. We weren't born in the US. Thank you, Zulma. Next, please. Wants to try Mirna. Um, I was born in the city of. Uh, no sé cómo se pronuncia esa palabra. Ni yo tampoco. <laughs> <laughs> en una ciudad, en una ciudad coreana, así que a ver. Icon, como que sí, no, Icon, algo así. Inchon, no sé, I don't know. I'm sorry. Uh, oh. <laughs> okay. Okay, thank you, uh, Mirna. What about the next one? Who wants to try? The next one, please. And my brother. And my brother. Mm -hmm. Where? Mm -mm. Um, said he was. Mm -hmm. When you say. It's, it's he. Mm -hmm. My brother, exactly. Yes, That's he. he. So he was. Yes. My brother was. And my brother was yes. born there too. Thank you, Mira. Uh, the next one, please. I need a volunteer. Vamos. El último, ejercicio, el último ejercicio hoy. Okay, Zulma. Mm. Oh, veamos. Jennifer Marisol, ahora quiere participar. Solo que siempre levantemos la manita para que no. no. Okay. okay. Thank you. Weren't my parents weren't weren't born in my parents weren't born in Choi. <laughs> ¿Cómo se pronuncia eso? Okay. Thank you, Jennifer. Okay. <laughs> Jose Manuel, the last one, please. Um sería they 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 were born in a capital. Seoul. 
Mm -hmm. In Spanish, you say Seul. In English, you say Sol. Mm -hmm. Eso sí me lo puedo. Sol. Sol. Uh -huh. Sol. Okay. In capital, Sol. Okay. Sol. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thanks, everybody, for your participation. I'm going to check the attendance one more time. And uh, if you hear your name, please let me know. Voy a pasar asistencia por última vez. Blanca Mireya, dígame. Um, la pantalla de ahorita tengo una, las view de, de varios compañeros. No tengo la, no sé por qué. ¿Qué es lo que le sale? Perdón. Las cámaras de varios compañeros. Ah, de veras. Sí. No está compartiendo. Ahorita, ¿qué ven los demás? Lo que usted está compartiendo, Ticho. Ajá, ajá. Sí, okay. sí lo que usted está compartiendo. Yo no se comparte, Ticho. Bueno, qué extraño. No sabría decirle cuál es el problema, pero... Le ha dado bueno. tips en todos los compañeros, en los cuadritos de los compañeros, por eso es que está Quizá, viendo la... Ajá. Sí, yo creo no que está es está que hay una cuadrícula donde te sale, donde te sale ahí este, para abajo en lista o cuadriculado, o solo uh -huh. vos o solo el, el, el teacher. Ok. Supongo Gracias. que eso es. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. <laughs> ok. Igual ya vamos a, a terminar. Ok, Blanca Mireya Galdames. Present. Thank you. Carlos René Ramírez. Creo que no. Ok, Celia Verónica Pleites. Present. Thank you. Emanuel Portales Hernández. Present teacher. Thank you. Fátima Noemí Rivera. Present teacher. Thank you. Irma Zuleima Grande, de Cuellar. Irma Zuleima Grande, de Cuellar. Último llamado, Irma Zuleima Grande, de Cuellar. Ok. Uh, Jacqueline Rebeca Cermeño López. Último llamado, Jacqueline Rebeca Cermeño López. Quiero revisar la lista, no voy a hacer. No, solo hay una Jacqueline. Ok, ¿quién más? No me contestó. Yo Irma. soy Jacqueline también, teacher. Ajá, sí, sí. Solo, solo, <risa> solo hay una Jacqueline que, que, que está conectada ahorita. A eso me refería. Ah, ok. Ajá, ajá. Soy Jacqueline, Jacqueline que, Guevara. Jacqueline Elizabeth Guevara ¿Sí? Centeno. Ajá, sí, correcto. Así es. Sí. Ajá. Ajá. Sí, a eso me refería, que solo hay una conectada ahorita. Ok, Perfecto, luego tío. salía Irma, 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 Irma. No, no está. Ok, veamos. José Alexi, sí, por ahí está, ya lo vi. Present. Thank you. Jocelyn Noemi. Present teacher. Thank you. Carla Abigail. Present teacher. Thank you. Ligia Lisbeth. I'm here, teacher. Thank you. Ricardo Alexander. Present. Thank you. Zulma Maritza. Present. Ahí está. Ok. Ok. Perfect. Everybody, thank you for your time. Thank you for your attention and your participation and your patience and your hard work. I will see you tomorrow. Take care. See you tomorrow, teacher. Good see you night. tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Good night. Good night. See you tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Good night.